another conversation uh african spiritual conversations and of course i'm joined by the queen mothers in here i'm so grateful ladies how was your weekend great weekend great weekend <laughs> yeah it was a great weekend it was a great weekend plenty of rest <laughs> I, I feel the same way i feel really really good um i wanted to start off this conversation today looking at what it would take sometimes when when not all of us, but when a lot of us talk about blackness, we talk about it in this monolithic kind of tone that we, 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 like if we all agreed to something. This morning, um, after watching a really good film, I was listening to some interviews with a certain someone that a lot of black people don't like. And partly I was agreeing with some of what the person was saying, and some of I was like, damn, you just lost me. You know? <laughs> but I feel like there were things in there that could have been a part of an agreement if black folks ever did anything like that, that we probably could meet this person at. But because we don't have those set agreements in place, mm -hmm. you just be black and be all over the place and then act mm -hmm. like that's the black agenda. What kind of things could we do to get to that place? Um, <laughs> well, first, you know, I, I, I'm going to stand that values drive mission and mission drives behavior. Uh -huh. um, organizations are just groups of people who have a, a standing agreement. And so um, when we think about um, the black community, not as a monolith, but as a group of individuals basically fighting for freedom, we are in the effort of... Um, asserting our freedom wherever we can find it. And sometimes um, because we experience so much loss of freedom in, in the workplace, in our interactions with white supremacist delusion, we, um, we miscalculate the importance of uh, having our say <laughs> at any given time. Like sometimes we um, want to express ourselves in in times when maybe it's not 100% appropriate. But, um, and so, you know, we try to, um, hi, yeah, yeah. Um, we try to <laughs> um, put <laughs> protocols in place when we get together. And a lot of times they're not as inclusive as we would like them to be. Um, they miss the mark in that way. And so we're not able to. So what I, Anytime I get a black a group of black people together, no matter what we're talking about, if we are trying to move forward in any area, my first thing is let's agree on values. Let's agree on what is the most important thing to all of us at this time. That's our first agreement is that if we don't share values, we're not going to be able to get anything done anyway. So um, some people are in opposition to Black Lives Matter and they're black, but it's not the organization that is the value, it is the idea. The idea that all black lives are important, that as black people, each of us is individually as important um, as anyone else on earth. Like we, like our lives are valuable, not in comparison to anyone, not in comparison to each other, but as a human being, you are, your life is valuable. And that there is a need in, the, in our community to defend the people who are most vulnerable because we as a community are vulnerable, but we also have individuals within our community that can't operate without some type of protection. 
they are going to be the ones that are more than likely within their lifetime are going to be calling for some type of backup. Now, whether that's parental and family backup, whether that's um, outside of the community legal, like they're getting physically attacked, whether they are constantly financially attacked, whatever front that is that creates a vulnerability that you feel that you can't handle on your own, then that that becomes important to the whole. And that is a value that we need to have. Our education is not balanced with our history and experience in this country or in the world. So we have to be in control of our education. That is something that is valuable. I'm just talking about the black community as a whole. Inside of African spirituality, there are other things too that we need to focus on in order to create shared values. There's a lot of conversations that could be had in groups. Like this is a year that we should be gathering more. We should be start to have these conversations about what are the things that are most important. And I think what we'll find is there's definitely an overlap. And so empowered as we are in the African spiritual community, we can take measures to begin to build things that will benefit the black community as a whole. And so if we're, if we're thinking that way, if we're thinking in a proactive forwarding building kind of way, then these are the things that we can count on ourselves to create. And I do think that that needs to be one of the values. Like if, are you building something? Like don't say that you are working for the black community and you're not doing something that's forwarding. Like even self care for women is a forwarding thing for the black community because we are the primary caretakers of most of the children in our community. We are the primary caretakers of each other in the community. And in order for the community to thrive, we need to have healthy children. We need to have well-rounded, well-educated, thriving children. We need to have thriving women that can um, contribute fully to balance out the energy because part of what we're up against involves patriarchy. The, the way that patriarchy is interwoven with racism and the white supremacy delusion creates a situation that does not work for anybody. And if we're honest with ourselves, then we need to start to have those types of conversations. They're hard conversations because we have integrated fully into our society. <laughs> So a lot of us have concerns about the people closest to us. But I'm going to tell you, since the fight broke out, the person that messages me uh, on the regular is my nephew's wife. And she is, um, she's a white woman. And she, you know what I mean? But she's clear. She's raising black kids. And she wants them to be, they're mixed, but she don't want them to be mixed up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, we, she <laughs> stay messaging me. And so I, you know, I recognize that we get to care for our families individually, but, but the work that we're doing has to stay focused on us as black people. Like mm -hmm. it's always a thing where when we do something for ourselves and the whole world benefits from it, whether it's from the blueprint whether it's from the actual contact with what we create, it's always, uh, it always benefits everybody. And we need to recognize our own value. And that, that, that is why I think it's important for us to align along values. And then everyone can create their own strategy in smaller groups or individually or however you, however you work, then you have a baseline to create your mission from and the missions for everything that we're doing should interlock like puzzle pieces because the foundation is the value. That's my idea. I think that I think when you said can we align on value, we talked about value. I was listening to somebody this morning that some of her key values I absolutely wholeheartedly agree. Mm -hmm. where people lose me 
is when they may have to um, dumb me down what they say because they have to make other people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's where she was losing me. So yeah. I was like, I agree with that. I agree with that. That, that makes sense. But, but then when we had to talk about what does that mean for other people who want to be at the table with us, then that's where the person lost me because it was kind of like, we don't want them to feel bad or, you know, yeah. I, see, I, <laughs> that's, I, uh, that's when I say that I call that whipping out the titty. Oh, Excuse yeah. my language, but I call that whipping out the titty. That's when in the okay. middle of a con you know, like a nursing mother, anytime the baby cries, you got to feed them, right? <laughs> that's but good. that's what, as black people, anytime white people walk into the room, then we got to whip out the titty. It's like, okay, and let's make them feel comfortable. Like you're still using your life in relation to whiteness. You're still trying to make room for 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 that to be for the people who hold that ruler to be comfortable and i think it's not that you should i don't think if you are having a forwarding conversation that you are isolating anyone who wants to help who wants to be of support or service i think though there are times when this conversation is not about everybody mm -hmm. okay true okay uh, yeah so yeah. uh, let can me you, ask you this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I, I was going to, now I'm going to ask a question because it's the whipping out the titties that got my, <laughs> my attention here <laughs> to my a large extent, okay? <laughs> when do we get to a place where true people and telling the truth mm -hmm. uh, are true? And putting aside the necessity of whipping out the titty, when do we get to a place where we can say, this is how I feel. This is what we feel. And you being uncomfortable is your problem. Yes. It's not my problem. Those mm -hmm. are your feelings. So yeah. we have to get to a place that when people come to that come to the table and want to sit down at my table mm -hmm. about my issues about my life then i shouldn't have to make you feel comfortable about what i feel about what you're doing to me yes okay uh -huh. or what your your what others are doing of your group are doing to me okay it has to get to a place where our truth mm -hmm. is, you know, I, you know, if I'm uncomfortable already, I, I'm uncomfortable because my children are under attack. My people yeah. are under attack. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable because I'm in a disenfranchised position when I should not be because I am one of the builders of yes. this whole country. Right. So uh, under those circumstances, I know how to build it. I also know how to take it down. This is something mm -hmm. we don't always think about. That's so true. So <laughs> I'm not going to help you feel better. That's not my job. My job mm -hmm. is to let you know that if you want to come to this table, you're going to have to be very conscious of the truth. Yes. My truth. Uh, not your okay. truth. My okay. truth. Can 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 I get some clarity here? Are we talking mm -hmm. about people sitting at the table who are black, or pe or a mixed group of people sitting? Because I, I I need to be clear on that role. What you know? I, when I asked the question, I meant it, anybody. That's how I felt. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I was okay. You know, it could be white people, mixed people. It could be black men, yeah. black women. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, if it, if it's our people sitting at this table, then it is possible that they would have these feelings when they sit down. That doesn't mean they will still have those feelings when they get up. I think that um, there is, um, for some, for some, you, when you make things very clear to them, it allows them to process what you have said and to go back 
and to start working on themselves and and come up with a new mindset and then they all i would believe that they can be a part of the solution because none of us are all the same on everything and <clears throat> I don't look at it as my table. I look at it as our table. You see, and if it's our table, we're going to have to have some um, some way of speaking to people and being with people who don't agree with us on everything. So what are you going to say? You go get to another table? I think there are five things that we have to come uh, to terms with. It might be six, it might be seven, but we certainly have to talk about education, healthcare, um, uh, uh, economics, um, food, and one or two other things. But there are some basic things that we have to go, always know that we have this agenda. That's exactly what the Panthers did. And I'm sure all the Panthers didn't agree with each other on everything, but they were, when they first came in, when they first mm -hmm. went to join the Panthers. But as time went by, you're able to speak to people and, and have dialogue that allows people to grow in their, in their head, in their mindset, in the way that they see the world. Everybody is not on the same path. Obviously, as a people, we are very different because we have different uh, backgrounds. I, I, I really don't need, I mean, I did tell everybody, I think that's, that's the beauty of having a conversation. I think when we talk about the table though, we, we, it's a misconception that we all have to stay at the table. Like I can agree with you to a certain point that I have to leave. You don't mm -hmm. get the right to say you disagree with me, but stay here. Mm -hmm. We we'll like wasting mm -hmm. time. Like me and you, you you working with girls. Wait, I'm there. You want to talk about this other shit? I'm out, I'm out. But that's not mine. And we haven't figured that part out. Because even yeah. in the Panthers, I've heard horrible stories from black women who were rank and file in the Panthers. But well, sometimes yeah. we talk about yeah. the Panthers, we forget about all the shit that happened to black women who served and rank and file. Yeah, uh, so mm -hmm. I don't forget about them because I'm well, what I'm saying is, but when we use them as examples, we have to also <laughs> look at the things that they did not go back and fix, or maybe they have time to fix. Because one of the things I learned, we have a way of guilting people into being at the table with people they probably shouldn't be at the table with. Mm. Yeah, they probably should not be at the table with. If I know somebody is a is a it hates women. I am not sitting at the table with you. I don't give a damn if you say you love your grandma. I am. I agree. I agree with that. But what I'm saying is, if we're coming up with a manifesto that all are the majority of Black people can put forward, no matter what group you're in. If you're in a group that don't like women, that's your group. If you're in a group that loves women, that's your group. If you, whatever your group you're in, there are five or six basic tenets as black people that we desire, all of us desire, most of us desire, and we desire changes in education, changes in policing, changes in housing, changes in healthcare. I uh, can, but I don't, can, that's what Ife, I don't, I think that's not what we're talking about. We know that people want good things. Right. We're talking yeah. about moral character. You cannot yeah. get to most places if you don't have any moral character. You can't. Can I want to. Yeah, I, I want to make a distinction too. Like, um, so we were talking about two things. We're talking about your personal table, and then you're talking about the community table, right? So as we mm -hmm. can align along values, and in in that way, everyone who's sitting there has their own strategy of their or their piece that they're working on. But we decided that these are the values that we'll all hold. And in order to uphold a value, yes, your character has to be intact. Yes, your integrity has to be intact. And I think that um, in response to what he is talking about, like there is a part where people will learn, but I don't think that should be our focus at this time. 
I feel like the people who are in the periphery who are trying to get it together, like it's just like when you go sit on the mat and there's a lot of bobble owls. The bobble owls that know the least are sitting up against the wall because they are trying to get it together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the people that are the closest and learn. to you. Yeah, and they're trying to learn. And so it's it's one of those things where you got to get in where you fit. Like I think in the in the middle of war in the state of emergency, that can't be our focus. I think if you are uh, upholding values with good character and integrity, you're not going to be just throwing bottles at people because they don't understand or they don't agree with you. I think that that's not the focus is whether or not we agree. Once we've agreed on the values, everyone takes their own strategy. And should you be found out of alignment yeah. with the values, then we have a mechanism to have a conversation about it and determine if even you are a part of this. Sure. But as it, sitting at your own personal table, in, let's just say if I'm addressing the fact that women are in danger, there's going to be a problem with some men because they're going to then say men are also in danger. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it, so there are some, there are some intersections that have not been addressed in the black community. One is like the article I posted the other day. Well, it was an article, it was an excerpt from one of Bell Hooks books talking about how black men and white women are a part of the problem and they also need a solution to the problem simultaneously. Like though black men are being aggressed by racism and police brutality, they're uh, simultaneously very aggressive with black women. And so um, as in, when it comes time for us to talk about the safety of women and girls, when I say defending the most vulnerable in our community, we're vulnerable within the community. Like we don't never have to have contact with anyone outside of the black community for mm -hmm. our lives to be in danger. That is a problem. Sure. But there's a lot of conversations about how women abuse men. The thing, the difference is that it doesn't result in a loss of life. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it may mm -hmm. result mm -hmm. in, in difficulties. It may result, and there's some conversation that needs to happen about male-female relationships. And then what has to be immediately addressed is any loss of life because the number one value is the preservation of black life in all forms. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So yeah. that's what I mean mm -hmm. by like, having a conversation and the people who need to catch up or learn or whatever, they can also be in the room, but that doesn't necessarily mean they get to sit at the table. So um, when we put it into perspective, like there's a spectrum of activity that's going to occur and everybody has a part to play. Even the people who are in opposition are going to play their part. But the thing, because they will bring attention to certain things that maybe we hadn't thought of, they will bring attention to the idea that all skin folk and kin folk, and that will be something that we will uh, have to address. You know, we'll, we're going to have to make some decisions and some distinctions about what is what, and then be very straightforward and candid about how we're going to approach it. We have this thing about us handling people with kid gloves because we think that we don't want to hurt their feelings. That's not your your feelings are not your life is the most important thing. Right. And if you don't even know that your life is in danger, I can't stop to tell you that I can't stop right now. You're going to have to watch what's <laughs> happening and figure it out. I mean, I'm just saying like it's not because there are some. Like there are women who will fight you on the fight in the fight to have black women's lives saved. They're going to tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. I was online the other day and said there, there are uh, over 400 women that have been killed since January by the hands of black men. What right. do you have to say about that? And the sister said, we're not talking about that right now. It's a whole bunch of men and one sister. She was like, nah, we ain't talking about that mm -hmm. right now. So this is what <laughs> but they divorce themselves. They divorce themselves from the reality. They divorce yeah. themselves from the reality. Yeah. And some of it is because of cognitive dissonance, right? So they right. might not Absolutely. even catch on. 
they may not even catch on until after it's all said and done and be like, woo, they actually did save my life, you know, or unless it touches mm -hmm. them directly. So right, some directly. people, yeah, some people are so caught up in their own lives that they, unless it touches them directly, it does not matter. Well, some people can read the writing on the wall and be like, if it touches my somebody who look like me, <laughs> then it's it's mm, touching me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And I then mean, there are, yeah, and then there are people who are like that. If that's my sister, that's me. So if it touch her, it touch me. Right on. So you know the thing that I've found is it is personal, okay. And I know for me it's personal, in the sense that. Family violence uh -oh. and you know, I know what that looks like. Yes. I know what that feels yeah. like and to have been a survivor of that. Mm -hmm. At the same token, mm -hmm. I have seen where fam where violence in the community has also touched my family in that we have people that have already died, men that have already died by the hands of other black men Yes, in our own community. Yeah. So that has a personal, I have a personal relationship with that. So I guess I, I really do become um, very cautious about when we, you know, when it's about telling others how you feel versus how you're trying to make them feel comfortable. I don't mm -hmm. feel it's necessary anymore. And I think that at, at some point, our more, our forward movement has to be, there has to be some kind of emotional cutoff where, hold up, you know, these are still our feelings about what we deal with. Character is extremely important in a value system. Mm -hmm. When you are developing a foundation of our character can have one or two choices. There is no middle. It's either good character or it's bad character. Which one are you going to adopt? Because there is no middle ground in that. So you have to bring, if you're going to deal with truth, you're going to have to bring with, deal with integrity. You're going to have to deal with honesty. You're going to have to deal with transparency. When you're talking about moving us forward in a way of thinking of taking care of our communities in a better way. Yes. Because it is, it's, you know, education, we have to make a decision about that. Our economics, we have to make a decision. These are all areas that we have to make a decision about mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Now, if that's in smaller groups, cool. From the, from the EFA community, I would say that we have to definitely make some larger leaps in defining what we're going to do and then do it. Not mm -hmm. talk about it, do it, mm -hmm. okay? Because that's a problem. We're not doing enough. And to me, uh, that comes from, especially uh, in Isheshe. Because Isheshe is not as, Isheshe is newer here in the diaspora mm -hmm. than it is on the continent, because that's thousands of years. But in the DS4, we have other breakdowns of our tradition, the denomination, so to speak. So which are actually more developed mm -hmm. because they've had more opportunity to be developed. But Isheshe needs to do something more concerning development of processes and programs and other things that will help us move along to help our people. Oh, where are our schools? Where are our, our temples? Where are our health care systems? Where are our educational systems? Some of us are starting, okay, but it's still not enough. Yes. Those levels yes. of protection is still not <clears throat> enough. And it's up to us to do something about it. And since we have a mandate coming from Ola Dumare this year, that says it's women. Well, it's always been women. We've been the backbone. We are the backbone. We continue to be the backbone. So you're still saying to us, we got to do the work. We have to bring the school system up for our, our children. 
we have to bring our health care. I guess we're going to also have to bring our protection by any, you know, I don't want to say by any means necessary, but I do want to say by any means, <laughs> any means necessary. Any means necessary. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, I didn't had too many, I've had one too many children die in this world, in this country that belong to me. So it is personal, okay? It's real personal. I got a problem with it. So I'm doing things to start changing the mindsets of those that I'm responsible for. And when I see that there is some kind of aberration, uh, aberration of mental their of uh, their mentality, then I start looking at what do I need to do to help forward them in mental health mm -hmm. to find different ways to get them back to mental health, good health. So yeah. you know, there's a number of things, but we got to do something. That's it. Because there's not enough being done in the Shea Shea community. I'm being real specific. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not talking about any other community, but the religious community that I'm part of. Because, I, you know, it seems to me that that's, that's what needs to be addressed right now, too. Yeah. From an African conversation, spiritual conversation, yeah. our um, communities need to do some work. Yeah. So, Sister okay. Uh, posed the question fairly early on, and I wanted to think we forgot about a question. But she wanted to discuss is there a heaven and hell in African spirituality? Now, I don't know how much of a conversation that would take, but I see some no heads shaking out there. Not a heaven and hell. Because yeah. that's that's Abrahamic, that's Abrahamic Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have the Akbashe, you have other other places where that that's evil stands off to the side and watches that that's good go ahead, you know, go on with a marvelous life in the afterlife. Okay. So we, you know, there is a place, but it's not called hell. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. would take a larger conversation to bring about uh, the definitions of the terminologies that you would have to use. Al Bashe simply is the garden of command. And that's where all things began mm -hmm. for the earth, proclamating of the earth. And then there's different levels of it. There's what, seven, eight different heavens. So there's different levels of, of this. So you have to, it's a larger conversation. Yeah, and then, and then there's, in the comedic sciences, you have ma'at and the feather. Uh, and um, <clears throat> if your soul is heavier than the feather, uh, you go to a certain <clears throat> place. So there are many African spiritual um, traditions and they have different um, places, but they don't call them heaven and hell. Is is there's that's just not how we talk in terms of heaven and hell. Um, but there are different dimensions and different levels of 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 the spirit world. In other words. Our ancestors are on one level in the spirit world, and then we have angels and and different levels of angels and just lots of different spirits. You have water spirits, you have all sorts of spirits. But and there are places if you haven't lived a good life, if you haven't had good character. Uh, throughout your lifetime, if you've done some pretty rotten things, if you're an evil hu human being, uh, there are places mm, that energy, I'm not going to say there are places, that energy has to um, go 
to um, the only word I can think of to a spot or a place or a realm a realm that energy has to go to a realm to redo itself and to 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 have another chance to redeem itself reincarnate yeah but and as a matter of yeah. fact all of us have done that to some degree well all of us have done that period it's not some degree because we've all been here before and uh some of us may come back to this realm again and some of us may move on to different realms and different dimensions yeah. so it de it depends on the system the african traditional system that you're working in um what that what the dimensions are and how you deal with that but heaven and hell those two words those two polarities do not exist as far as i know in any of the african spiritual traditions i don't know if somebody somebody oh, might know differently. I, was, I was just going to add that a, a wise man um once told me i told a whole bunch of us really that that concept of heaven and hell really is a state of mind like in this in this and where we are so he said like you know if you ain't got no food you hungry as hell if you ain't got no money you broke as hell you know <laughs> but things being like heavenly state, that's when things are good so on the very basic level without all the other stuff that people come up with in your core being you know when you're in a good space and when you're in a bad space in your mind, where you physically, where you are, we know that those concepts, even though people try to use those things to mm -hmm. enslave us, we know when we're in our own personal hell. Oh, we know we can't find peace with anybody. Mm -hmm. We know if every time somebody talk and you all you can do is bring the opposite of the, of the negative, that means you're in some kind of personal hell that you wanted all of us to experience. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I know when things are good for me. If I'm in a heavenly state, I want to share it with everybody. I'll share. I'll just be like, "Oh my God, take some of this, have some of this." Those are like those are like concepts that are really in your mind. This is what the person explained to me, and it made so much sense. So much so that I didn't need to do no whole deep explanation of what is heaven and hell. I really didn't need that because I've yeah. seen people being very poor, but they were in heaven in their mind state, and I've seen people who were super rich and who was miserable as hell. So it, mm -hmm. these are really mindsets, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, in the basic of form on this, on this, in this reality that we're in, which takes some work in both levels, on both polar so will. Mm -hmm. But doesn't that, at some given point, when you whatever state of mind you're in is how your reality goes? So if your state of mind is in a place where you are in turmoil, you're in turmoil. Whether right it's physical, wow. you know, you're in that. So that's that's why we do so much work with Ori, with uh, worshiping the head, with being able to change our mind, look at how we live, change how we think about it, because the global narrative has mm -hmm. one way of affecting you. But the narrative that you tell yourself has a direct impact on how you're going to behave and feel during the course of the day. Yeah. So that's, you know, this is your, your way of thinking can be in such a place. It's like being broke. Okay. As long as I'm, as long as I was telling myself, I ain't got no money. I ain't got no money. <laughs> this is a problem. I, I don't know where I'm going. I mean, and I never could find none. Couldn't mm -hmm. get a job, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. Because I'd already convinced myself that this that broke. was the problem. I didn't yeah. have it. So I was broke. When mm -hmm. I when I started the process of changing my mind about how I view money. Mm -hmm. and started to look at it as an entity of which I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. That I may not have the resource at this second, but before this day is out, I'm going to have it. And when I started thinking that way, 
it started happening okay. for me that right. way. I changed my mind about my own resources. I mm -hmm. became more introspective in making myself this whole internal thing that I do in terms of thinking and emotions and things about being more open yep. to the possibility of what I'm going to have and mm -hmm. being able to embrace that. You know, that it might be at this second, I'm not going to have that at this second, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to have it. So you have to change your whole viewpoint. And that's what our tradition teaches us. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's what I was trying to get to just in the, in the, in explaining that uh, concept of heaven and hell. I think when people, I try to make things as plain as possible. Yeah, because our yeah. enemy does a good job of tricking us up every time, and then we go along with it, trying to prove to them that we smarter than them. I always say you gotta make you gotta make it plain. You gotta make yeah, it so I, plain. I just I want to make a distinction too, just um, to piggyback on what Yeah Yeah said. That um, okay, I'm gonna try to make it plain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be getting carried away. Um, <laughs> I'll try to make it plain. Um, okay, so heaven and hell creates two poles, right? And though we know that it's a journey of consciousness back and forth between the two, when you take away that as the ruler, right? Because that has nothing to do with African spirituality. That's the Abrahamic situation, right? And we uh -huh. think about um, our life as a, as a container of endless possibilities and our thought traffic and our emotions and our intention driving where we fall in relation to our what we want for ourselves rather than thinking of heaven and hell as the two places of one one end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum we could just think of it as where we are and where we want to be and so mm -hmm. um, when we do that it kind of it narrows the scope but it also creates a world of possibility that we live in that's much greater so uh, we're not we are focused on our character as a part of our way of being in the world that means that we want to be in integrity we want to be truthful we want to be honest we want to be forwarding we want to be learning and evolving all the time right but that's a, that's a, our way of being in the world and that's just because we want to be focused on our character not because we scare we gonna go to hell or we want to go to heaven that's how we live and then there's right. what we want to do there's how we want to feel specifically in relation to um, uh, in alignment with our destiny and out of alignment with our destiny, which is a different conversation mm -hmm. from heaven and hell. Because for you, in alignment may mean one set of things. And for me, it may mean another set of things, right? Depending on what mm -hmm. we came here to do. Yeah. Whereas you have certain challenges and I have other challenges as well. We may, there may be an overlap on things that we can work on together, but there are definitely things that I have to do while I'm here. And I may be further away from the goal than I want to be. And there are other things that you may be further away from the goal than you want to be. And that's specific to ourselves. So when we take away the generalization of heaven and hell, then we can get into the real work of refining yourself as a person, becoming a right. better person, becoming a better uh, uh, person encapsulating God in the earth. Like, who are you? What did you come here to be? Then you can get into the conversation about spiritual uh parents you can get into the conversation about the forces that are here to support you you can get into a larger conversation about what your world yeah. should look at like but as a as a way of being in the world we are focused on our character individually and collectively to say these uh -huh. are the things that we believe in so you can count on all of us to to uphold these values and um, in our interactions with each other so that we are not, that's the difference, like for me, because when you have a general mm -hmm. relation of heaven and hell, then you could say, well, I want to go to heaven. And, and then your intention, <laughs> you elevate your attention above someone else's intention. 
for themselves, right? And so what you're working on is no less important than what I'm working on. It may be different, but the fact that that's yours to do, that's the most important thing for you. And what's mine to do is the most important thing for me. And then it creates a respect. So when we say preservation of life, I think we also need to add in respect for life because in the respect factor, then you get to uh, work on fulfilling your destiny and I get to work on fulfilling my destiny and where they overlap, that's cool. We can work together, but where they don't, then I need to leave you the hell alone so you can do what you got to do. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes mm-hmm. is, it, is it possible that there's a small key that we're not looking at that keeps people at these loggerheads which is competitiveness. Yes. You know, that competition is so ingrained and mm-hmm. it's really not going to gain you or me anything. Right. Okay. Right. By us being in competition, my destiny is no greater than your destiny. Right on. We have a destiny. Destiny. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Period. And so we have whether our jobs intersect interlock you know are uh, intertwined there's still a destiny that everyone has their own individual ones to manifest for themselves yes. the problem is yes. when we get into the competition of and that's all the way through this yeah, is even in terms of when we say black lives matter well, all the mm-hmm. folks say all oh, life matter. You know, right. it's like, come on now. It's not a competition. You out, out conscious it's, each other. Right. You go, you go out conscious me when I'm talking, you know, it's, it's that. And yeah. that level of that level of competition is so insidious. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it impacts the ego. Yeah. And it, and it gets you where you ready to fight about something that is that is essential to both of you right to live okay and you know just to live and so you have these problems that are so common okay they really you know it's really not that big of a deal Mm -hmm. it's just that competition makes it bigger than what it is that's okay and I feel like um, that would be a non-issue if we were really paying attention to the fact that if you are in the bi- about the business of fulfilling your destiny, that benefits me as well. Absolutely. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like if, if you don't do Absolutely. if you don't do what you came here to do then that makes it even more difficult for me to do what I came to do. That's a problem. Absolutely. That's, that's the, uh, one of the underlying problems that we're experiencing in the black community right now mm-hmm. is that we've mm-hmm. let, we have let people off the hook for certain things that they should be paying attention that's to. So true. Mm-hmm. And if we did it, if we made it just as important for them to have a clear understanding of the importance of fulfilling their destiny, then everybody would be pulling their weight. Mm, right. In the forwarding right. of black people. Like we wouldn't, right. a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with, we would not be dealing with. That's because so it's, 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 that is the part. Because the beauty of African spirituality, like I love being in the world this way. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I love being in the world this way because as soon as your ego gets out of control, you fall into a hole and you need your community to come get you out. Like you can't you out. do it. You can't do it by mm-hmm. yourself. So mm-hmm. then you are relying on someone having done the work that they came here to do in order to mm-hmm. assist you. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can't mm-hmm. never get too big outside, no matter who mm-hmm. you are. No matter how how many titles you got, how many initiations mm-hmm. you got, there always comes a time when you need somebody time, else to yep. do something. Like mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you could put a you could wrap save you, you. Could, yeah, you could <laughs> to save you exactly. You could you can yeah. put a, a a a goat in a huck of buck and, and do what you need to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you can't do that if you if you broke on the rack. <laughs> 
you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? You yeah. can't make it to the farm. You can't do you can't make the omiya. You can't even do the prayers if you if your voice is gone. Like these are the things that Absolutely. it's part of a human experience that you are your divinity is subject to your humanity in this body. And it is the lowest vibration. Mm -hmm. So shit happens. And then you gotta go get your people to help you. <laughs> You know and pray they ain't mad at you exactly. you know? for acting the door. Pray. So it's like right. that that's the part of it that that evens the playing field. And if we really was paying attention, like we would know that you need not only you to light up when your child walks in the room, you need the community yeah. eyes yeah. to light up when yeah. your child walks yeah. in the room. That's how you get yeah. the right amount of self-esteem, value, and self-worth out of that life like it takes mm -hmm. more than just you to do the thing but you also need to do what you're supposed to be doing so and, and mm -hmm. we're not perfect it's not it's not exact science but it is a science <laughs> yes it is <laughs> you know yeah it is, it is. so yeah mm -hmm. we just put the pieces together you know and then that's the whole thing about um trying to handle people and worry about their feelings when we should really be just speaking the truth because there comes a time when people have to be able to recognize the truth, right? So yes, mothers talk right. to their children so that you recognize my voice. So that when you're walking across the street and a truck is coming and I say move, you don't turn around and say, huh, what? I was in, I'm going over here to right, do this. Right. Right? And then you get hit by a truck. like. You want to be able to also, <laughs> you know, when you're talking to a person who's at the infant stage, to tell them to get out, of, get out the street. A car is coming, and they move. Right. Like you need to have the power of the truth in your tone. If we water that down, mm -hmm. based on people's feelings, then it won't be their fault. As efficacious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You will lose the impact mm -hmm. of your word if you if you water right. it down and t and talk around things when you should be taking the direct path, and it's okay because guess what feelings we could we can fix you a plate and patch you up later you'll be all right, but <laughs> you know it's people out here dying, <laughs> it's people out here yeah. dying, and we and then when they gone then we got to try to do all the other stuff. I mean you know it's just a lot, so we have to be. Like we got to put things in their proper order. Mm -hmm. We really do. Yeah, we really do. Does it get to a place where we can, does it get to a place where we can also start to talk about how to uh, stop anesthetizing ourselves to the, the enormous Ooh. problem of yeah. respect for life? Because if you don't respect life, you don't love life. Yeah. You know, and when yeah. people, you know, ignore and diminish and dismiss a problem that or a topic that is life rendering, then we have to sit there and ask ourselves the question, does this person respect life? life. Do they life. have a love for life? Yes. Okay. Because that's the impact that I look at when someone comes to uh, a conversation and they automatically dismiss the enormity of one woman mm -hmm. dying and they don't want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Then that's problem is if it's even one one person, one child, they don't want to have the conversation. They want to move the agenda on. There's a problem with that mentality. Who are you? <laughs> you know, because you're alive, right? You're breathing, right? So do you respect the indwelling spirit that's mm. air that keeps you here? Is that a okay. self-esteem issue? I think it's partly a self-esteem issue. Um, or it may also have some deeper impact, deep, deeper meaning in the sense of, is that person well? Okay. We have to think about some of the things that when people do them, are they showing us or presenting to us uh, a deeper side of their personality 
that's fractured and broken wing person. Mm -hmm. Okay. That yeah. does not have a, you know, because you got mm -hmm. that they are in, in, they are so intent on an agenda that they're not really looking at wait a minute you got life it can be gone yeah okay yeah. it can be your life can be gone so right. are you thinking about right. it in those terms you know there's some other things that we have to look at when people present to us their personality stuff when they dismiss and diminish another human being mm -hmm. okay and, and what that means because you're telling me that you don't like you don't like women and you're a woman yeah i got a problem with that <laughs> you yeah. know yeah. um and that's uh, or you don't like women and you're a man but yet you came through a woman in order to be here yeah mm -hmm. you know so we got, you know, you have to look and weigh what that personality is presenting to. Yeah. Because oh. they, they might not be ready to be in the fight. I mean, they just some people not ready for it. Mm. They got they either got some growing up to do, some healing to do, whatever the case may be. Like some people can do it moving, but some people cannot, and that's okay. Right. If they're going to benefit from the end result, but they cannot be in the mix because they're going to be the hold up. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, the, that's a part of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we still, even that it comes a time when you come to face to face with those people in the community who you will value their life, but they won't. Mm. Yeah. 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 We got and I always you know have what? somebody those in our family people, like that. Mm -hmm, but those people I'm, get you killed too. Yeah, they I'm get you killed. If you let them, you try to help them, and you get in, you know. Yeah, yeah, mm -mm. yeah. I've worked with yeah. many of those people. Many yeah. of them. That's the people the, that you work with behind the walls. Yeah, those are that's there's a there are people who that's their work, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I I honestly know that that's not everybody's work, and for sure there are the people who have to pull, do the heavy lifting for everybody, like and yeah. that's you know, and that takes a different kind of team, and that team has to be cohesive in a different kind of way, like mm -hmm. and you can't Absolutely. make any exceptions for um, a weak link in the chain because everybody will go down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you have to, Absolutely. there's some, some circles, I mean, they're concentric circles, but some circles got to be tighter than, uh, tighter. They got to be tight no matter what. Like, you know, we know that those people are a part of our community and we still value their lives. And we know that when we get done doing what we got to do, they're going to also benefit. And eventually they will either catch on or not procreate. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen to them. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's not to dismiss the, the value of their life, but it is to say that if they don't value their life, then they're not in a position to fight for the value of anyone else's life. Right. On. right. Absolutely. Yeah. You said that so well, but I think sometimes for me, the disappointment is people wanting you to hold up your progress for theirs. Yep. And I, I've seen that happen so much in the black community. Like when people were out partying and getting high and for whatever reason, there was somebody there holding that together. So mm -hmm. when you got your chance to come back around after doing all your foolishness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You didn't even know that that person was holding that up. So you even had that as an opportunity or as a, oh, as a, right. a to come back to. Who you think was holding this thing together while you was out there boogieing and doing you? Mm -hmm. Who you think was mm -hmm. holding Mom, Mama. It's usually mama holding it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes we talk and it's like, you know, when it comes to doing, that's when you get to really see who folks really are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. We're a bunch of talking, but it's like, okay, we we about to roll up on these people. You look around and maybe two people behind you, but before it was like a hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> It's maybe, true. maybe, maybe, too. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. look around and you be on that no, branch by, oh, yourself. by yourself. 
I'm trying to tell you, you and your ancestors, and you trying to, okay. you know. That's all you want to <laughs> but, uh, but I hope you had to talk with Eshu before you put your behind out there, because you be, you uh, know. I hope you had, uh, not just the talk, you put some cola down there. That's what I'm saying. And some food down there. Matter of fact, uh, mother, I, if I ain't people. got a rooster right now, I'll exactly. give it to you later. Can we, exactly. can we have, a, have, a, have a conversation? I'm telling you. you know? Because <laughs> I, you know, and that should be done anyway. It's like one of those things where you just get in the habit of knowing where your reinforcement comes from. And then right. after a while, you don't worry about the other stuff. You just be like, hey, if we, it's nice. Oh, it's, it's nice to see head. you. You know? <laughs> yeah, but it takes some, it takes some conditioning because we ain't, we're not, uh, I will say that, um, as we largely come from Christianity and Islam, we, a lot of people are not built f f like that in the beginning. So they have to yeah. do the, they have to do the work of unlearning and relearning mm -hmm. and conditioning themselves to, um, to think in that way. I think we'll find that that's going to be the, our saving grace. And I, it's a beauty that, that women, generally don't have time to do things in a way that doesn't work in general. Yeah. That's a generalization, but <laughs> you know what I mean? For the most part, we don't. So when we find that something works, in a, then we'll do it regardless of it. We'll find a way to make it fit with who we are or, or whatever uh, mm -hmm. facade we holding up. We'll, we'll find a way. Cause it's a lot of, you know, just like in Nigeria, I was amazed at the amount of people who came from church to the compound. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, mm -hmm. that, there's the same dynamic here. It's just a little, it's a little different, but it's the same dynamic, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, we look at it comparatively. Mm -hmm. It's not because you all in, in the, in days beyond and days that I remember that people would leave church and go to the hoodoo people when they needed problem solved. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Can yeah. you find my son? Can you mm -hmm. can you uh move this woman out of my man's life? Can yeah. you help me get a job? You know, yeah. they you know, they went to the church by by habit. Mm -hmm. But they came to the hoodoo people to get the work done. By by necessity. Because they yes. knew, mm -hmm. okay. So that was the dynamic that we've had here too, yeah. and has always been. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise you wouldn't have these these different shops and things that work on uh, uh, botanica, you know, and yeah. other things that help enhance your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, they wouldn't be in business if they weren't. You wouldn't have that person that lived in the woods that goes out there and does pick these herbs and, and kill this animal and do this and do that because yep. that was necessary, you know, or make this potion or make that to help your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had those things here too. Yes. When I lived in Ghana, one of the things that was amazing to me was I used to call them talismans. Talismans that would be stickers on the car about Jesus saves, and they'd have them plastered all over the car. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, at night, they would come to us to get work done. Yeah. Okay. So, and you look at them and you say, if only you could break free mm -hmm. of this mindset that you have. I don't. That that keeps you in this space, yeah. but yet you you don't see the dynamic, and and the subterfuge you know that it creates in 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 general, that you go here and put all your resources into building this, but right. yet you come over here for right. me to save you. Mm -hmm. Okay, ain't that cold? Yeah, it's real cold. It's seriously cold, and, yeah. and you yeah. have your destiny. Your destiny is to be that yeah. person in the woods. Okay, mm -hmm. 
And there's the code of conduct that we have that keep us there to be that salvation for that person's life and to learn our craft and to continue learning our craft in order to do the work that we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. one day they'll get it. Okay. <laughs> and, and if they don't, but there might be a generation next that will. Yeah. And so you keep yeah. doing the work, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's it. We look for the work to do be done. Yes. Anyway. Yes. And that's yeah. it. We do. That's right. the, that is. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, this has been a great conversation as always. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. more and tomorrow. This is great. We started out almost talking about ways in which black folks can get to the table on those shared values. And then we jumped over to heaven and hell as a concept. Was it real or not real? And then we just kind of ended with all you really probably need is your ancestors and the things from here, bro, because, bro, it just gets to be too much, you know, like, that's the only thing that's really constant and consistent. When it's moving for the planet, you yeah. got, you know, man, in the summer. Oh, you know? God. We'll be back here tomorrow, man, yeah. with another awesome conversation. As we talk about you know, conversations have around African future conversations, y'all. Yeah. We'll see y'all tomorrow. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.